Okay, the first thing I, I just need to do is, um, because I, I took a screenshot, it's actually easier, um, so you can see where the, the initial um, setup was, other than obviously looking at the, um, the CSI, but looking at the chart. This is the Euro-Canadian that I took, I um, can't remember, about half an hour ago, wasn't it, David? Yeah. But basically, this is, this is the three-minute chart. And we can see here, this is the volume point of control. This, the volume point of control is, it, it has its, um, it's, it's got a little bit of what we call market profile in it. And this area, when, when a, a market is in this sort of congestion phase, um, it, it's also sometimes known as a value area, which is basically where the market is, is in balance in the sense that there's no clear divergence, there's no clear direction because uh, buying and selling is, is 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 going on, and it's really not, you know, it's in it's in status, if you like, it's in balance. And markets spend an awful lot of time in balance. Uh, in fact, I think they spend 60 or 70 percent of uh, of the time just sort of moving sideways. Something you then need a trigger to be able to uh, to to move uh, that price in one direction. Sometimes it'll be a piece of fundamental news, sometimes it'll be um, a geopolitical event. There's all, there are all sorts of you know, catalysts that will move it. From a technical perspective, um, what you actually need is you need market orders to come in, you need traders to come in for, and for whatever reason say, right, I'm going to push that market to uh, an, a, you know, either one way or another. Because the market, particularly the forex market, is absolutely littered with um, with limit orders, with orders, bank orders, banks have an obligation. That's that that's the whole reason of their of their, their business. They're there to buy and sell currencies for uh, the, their their clients. So uh, you know the the bank traders will will say, okay, well we've got this deal coming in. You know uh, we've got to buy uh, 10 billion uh, euros or 20 billion dollars or whatever it is. And you know they, they will look at a chart and and they they sorry the first thing they do is they they agree with their client that they will affect the transaction for them. It's a simple, put it this way, it's a very, very scaled up version of you going into a bureau de change and saying, I need some money for my holidays. They will quote you a rate, okay? And, you know, you don't have any choice. They say you either take it or leave it or you go to another bureau de change. That's what people, that's what big corporations do. They go to their bank and they say, you know, we're buying, uh, we're buying some stuff from China. We're buying stuff, uh, some new piece of machinery it's all sorts of reasons reasons they need they need the banks to affect the uh, the exchange as a bank will quote the exchange but the bank what they also do they charge their clients commission but they you know they're not they will then go and try and make some money on that so I look at the chart and I say okay well you know we've quoted our client this rate but you know if we actually you know push it away we can we can make some money on the deal there's all sorts of things going on we kind of know what the what the levels that the banks are interested in in two ways there's something called the order boards which aren't dif which are difficult to get hold of now and we used to be able to get them um uh, quite freely but you have to uh, subscribe to to reuters but there is another uh, 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 set of levels that we look at and that is called the option expiries and those you will find these are uh, uh, you will find this at places like talking uh, um, uh, talking forex and i think forex live also give them as well so on a daily basis there are these levels that the banks you know they're, they're out there and you know price uh, there's all sorts of reasons so these are the limit orders now in the meantime between the orders obviously the price has got to get there and they do that into in two ways market orders come in you know, an order comes in uh, at, at institutional level. I've got to do this exchange. I haven't got time to, you know, set up a, a, a you know, a, a complicated order and a, a limit order. So that floods the market with liquidity. Retail traders also provide the liquidity. They will look at their charts from a technical perspective and they'll say, "All oh, right, you know, I think there's, you know, the Fib that Fibonacci level's coming up. I think I'm going to sell or I'm going to buy." It. That provides and that helps to shift the market out of this. Um, uh, 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 this congestion phase that we see here. The congestion phase like this also corresponds to um, Richard Wyckoff's second law of cause and effect, which basically says the longer a, a market or, or, or um, price action is in congestion, that is the cause, 
when it breaks away, the bigger will be the effect. And we can see, this is only a three minute chart, but we can see how long this congestion phase lasted on this three minute chart. But it's also, um, it's, it's got the VPOP, but it also has this very strong resistance uh, level here, which is stronger than the blue. That's resistance, that's, that's the blue level is we, we sort of call support. And so if you like, it's already got a slight sort of bearish tone to it. And what then happened, there was a, a trigger, Maybe it was the oil price, maybe it was, but leave that, leaving that aside for the time being, we know that was the beginning of this uh, waterfall lower. And the way I use um, uh, uh, a chart set up like this, um, a time chart, I then also have a non-time based chart, which is the Renko chart. Now, this is from Ninja Trader, this three minute chart. And my Renko chart is actually from my MT5 platform. This is the this is the level. This here, this this zone here, this break here. This is uh, 54.98. This is where uh, the VPOC and that that zone there was at the time when I looked at uh, at this particular chart. I'll just close that for a second. There we are. So that was the break break lower. It was always it was on a, it was in a kind of bearish tone to it because of the resistance that was ahead. But it was the break from there. This move down to here doesn't look very much, but it's actually 70 pips. And this is what has actually happened this morning. Now, the reason I showed you that um, um, that screenshot is because in the move lower, this is now the three minute chart. This is where it was back up here. And this is now where it's moved because this is the move that we had. We can see that we see the waterfall. There's a lot of volatility. We had two volatility candles. Then we had a, a, another volatility candle on, a, on, a, on an effort to rise with a reasonable amount of volume underneath it. But as always with volatility, price actually went back into the spread of the candle. Then we had the 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 fall lower. We can see this supported by rising uh, by rising volume. This is now uh, um, um, then the then the VPOC dropped down here. So if you like, it was coming into um, a sort of an, an, what we call an accumulation again, a, const, a, a, a congestion uh, phase again. We had effort to rise. We had a ton of volume going into that candle. Look at the, the, the range of that candle with the amount of volume that was underneath it, but it didn't move very far. Then we had another candle with a wick to the top of the candle. It kind of moved side. There's a lot of volume coming in under here, but not a lot is happening, which is what we want to see. And then we're, as we, as I said, we are approaching the London Open when all, all sorts of things happen. Not so much in 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 uh, um, cross pairs, but we can see here there's a lot of transactions going on in this phase that is now uh, congestion again. So we had the breakaway. We have the trend, a volatile trend, because we've got the uh, uh, the, the volatility uh, uh, indicator triggered. And this, by the way, everything we say in these sessions is all explained in very great detail in our education program. I know we've got some of our education students here today. They will, you know, what I'm saying will, you know, they will understand in clearly uh, what I am talking about. This is a, a trend, it, it was a volatile, then it, it was much smoother. Now we're going into a congestion phase. There's a lot of volume going into this into this congestion. We've got a, a two bar reversal, uh, a, a volume underneath it, but the volume then falls away quite quickly. So it's it's it really can't decide what, is it gonna go higher? Is it gonna break higher? Or is it gonna congest for a little while longer? This is where we then have to look at multiple time frames. So this is a three minute chart. What am I seeing on my six minute chart? Well, I can see the same thing here. It's still attempting to find a base, attempting to find uh, an area of, of, you know, of accumulation before it can move higher. Or is it actually just going to go further into congestion and then break lower? And again, what we do, we go and have a look at the slower time frames. This is the 30 minute chart. This is actually a continue, what we had this morning with this break, right going back back to um, uh, four o'clock in the morning uh, in, the, in the Asia session, a big, big volatility candle. After volatility, we expect a retrace into the spread of the candle. That candle there represents 
this can what happened here on this congestion phase so when you use multiple time frames and you're in a trade and you have something like the 30 minute chart and you see a volatility candle appear suddenly like that you know almost instantly there is going to be a pause so you can actually use that as an exit signal if you want to stay in the trade that is up to you or if you have if you have a, a number of contracts a number of uh, uh, you can take something off and just and just leave it so what you do is you scale out of uh, the position that you are in now what's interesting on the 30 minute is we've had this effort to rise here a reasonable amount of volume underneath it then we had another down candle again a reasonable amount of volume. but this is the candle which is the most interesting because as it's being formed at the moment it has a very deep wick to the top of the candle but you know we're coming uh, what have we got another eight minutes to go that doesn't look terribly strong at the moment if you wanted you know if you were either looking for a re-entry or if you were in a position and you'd left some of your uh, some of the contracts on the table you would say okay well I'm, I just might as well leave them on and then going up to the daily chart just for context what is interesting about the daily chart is we've this pair has been in this very extended uh, uh, congestion rate very wide range I accept that but it's never really broken into a strong trend one way or the other what's interesting though is this this candle here this is the uh, uh, this is the cell that we've had overnight and coming into London and it still looks quite weak so you could argue that you know wait until the setup if you are on the faster time frames, if we go back to the um, here, we go back to the Renko chart. This is the the move that we've had this morning. This is the congestion that we're seeing at the moment, but it's very, very choppy, as you can see here. So really it's a case of waiting. This is where support and resistance comes in. Well, what are the levels? The levels are here. You really have to wait to 54.23. The beauty of having the indicators that we have developed, if I just bring it up here for a second, is the multiple time frame CSIs will tell you whether you know you are going to get a reversal, whether it's going to be a tradable reversal. Now, is that reversal going to be a, what we call a reversal from primary trend to pri back to primary, or is it just primary to secondary? And this is where volume price analysis comes in. And Wyckoff's three three laws they give you uh, they help you with your timing, but they also tell you what is likely to be happening next. So. I can see the, uh, the the Canadian has turned down. The euro still hasn't turned back up. This is the 15 minute chart. But you know, you just move. I usually have these on. I have just have four or five of these up, as David has over there. Um, and you can see the flows into these currencies, and they will both help you with a potential entry, but also help you to keep you in and ride out whether what you're seeing at the moment is just a secondary pullback. Or is it the start of a major reversal? This is how this market moves. You all come to it at different times of the trading session. And if you don't look at the multiple time frames, you don't understand what the price structure of the chart that you are looking to trade in, uh, trade, take a trade on, and the price structure of the of a chart either side of that in terms of uh, in terms of time frames, then uh, you know I think you, you you're going to you're going to struggle. Uh, by sticking to one chart and you know just thinking well I think it's going to go up or I think it's going to I think it's going to go down that's what Wyckoff does that's what VPA does and that's what our indicators uh, do they not only f tell you what the uh, the narrative of what's going on in in the market and on the charts but more importantly is they give they tell you what is then likely to happen next is there anything you want to add to that David um, that's it so I move over to you now yeah Okay.